Well, a number of factors. I mean, the main factor, I think, is that Bill Shorten wasn't liked or trusted. And a lot of Morrison's campaign was focused on Shorten. You notice he spent most of his time focusing on their policy initiatives and what they'd mean and how much they'd cost and creating the impression of a big spending, a big taxing alternative that couldn't be trusted. And then there were issues within that sort of franking credits, uh, which although they only affect about 4% of the retirees, <laughs> they, uh, they um, were used as a basis for a fear campaign about what he would do to retirement incomes and uh, related to some superannuation changes and a scare campaign just by word of mouth really the, of possible death duties and mm -hmm. wealth taxes and so on. Big scare campaign that frightened a lot of people and that's the one def demographic that moved. But beyond that, I mean, there was a lot of uncertainty about Labor's policies. Uh, people thought they might have laid out a bit, but how much didn't they tell us? You know, this sort of thing. Given so, what you've just said about Shorten being unlikable, how do you then feel about the comparisons being made between Shorten and yourself in 1993 when you lost the so-called no unlosable election <laughs> for the coalition? No comparison. Uh, look, uh, we had a very broad-based agenda in difficult times. I mean, the economy got into the recession that we didn't need to have, sort of thing. There was a, a sense of, of extreme pain and uh, in the economy generally, in society more broadly. And so we brought a broad-based reform agenda in every single area of public policy. Uh, Shorten just picked uh, three tax concessions and tried to make that into a radical policy. And I guess in terms of tax, there are hundreds of tax concessions you could have looked at. He picked three. It was all about trying to create the impression he was going to hit the top end of town to the benefit of middle income or low income earners, not so much low income as middle income earners, that it was all about wealth distribution, not about wealth, um, wealth creation. It was a, a very divisive strategy. That doesn't work in Australia. So I think he left himself out there on the extreme left, if you like, of the debate with those sort of initiatives at a time where he's not liked. I mean, in terms of the two part, in terms of the regular polling, he was never in front as preferred prime minister. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.